In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create customized questions in your Map Explorer uh, map. So I have just created my map with my different pins, and I'm going to slide down. We've already selected quiz with Touch Explorer as our game mode. We've selected what type of questions should be asked or custom questions. Are we going to shuffle the questions? Yes, I want them in a random order. I'm going to go ahead and select um, five questions per round. So I might put in 20 questions on this map and it will randomly choose five questions and then um, the student will answer those five questions and it'll be scored and then they can play the game again and they'll get another random five questions, which will probably be different questions. I could go ahead and do 10 here if that's what I wanted, if I wanted my student to answer 10 questions. I'm using this map as a way to teach um, basic skills here. So I'm just going to do a few at a time right now. So I'm going to add my first question and I'm going to show the different types of questions that we might include. Um, so the first one is just find a place. So I'm going to say let's find, find um, Kevin's house. All right, and then I'm going to select on the right hand side of that. There's a the little down arrow. I'm going to select that and it's going to ask me, do I, is it a pin, an intersection, a street or a region? So with this one, find Kevin's house. That's um, the house on here that I marked. That's a label. So that's a pin. So I'm going to select that. And then when I do, the different pins come up. So here is Kevin's house. There's also Pittsburgh Elementary School, Chatham County Sheriff's Office, Blossom Flower Shop, the baseball field, and the tennis courts are the pins that I've added. So that's my list. I'm going to select Kevin's house. Now I'm going to add my second type of question. So that was the pin type question. The second type of question I'm going to do is I'm going to find a street. So I'm going to say find Johnston Street. Now notice this is my question and I'm going to spell it all out, no abbreviations in my question part. And the reason I do that, I spell it all out, is because the screen reader doesn't always read the abbreviations correctly. So I want the screen reader to say the correct um, announce it correctly. But when I come over here and select my answer, the answer has to be exactly the same as what was in my map. So sometimes I'll come back and I'll scroll back and look and see it. Was there an abbreviation in there on um, that street name or did I spell it correctly? If I don't have it exact, it will not work. So I noticed that most of my streets have ST for street and there's no period after the ST. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write, uh, I'm going to select street as my option. Again, pin, intersection, street, and region. Those are my four choices. I'm going to do street. And now I have to type in the street and I have to type it in exactly. So it's Johnston space capital S T. All right. If it if I do not make this correct, if I do not type it exactly as it is, if I spell out the word street in my answer here, when the game goes to play this, even if the student selects the correct street, it will not, the game will stop. It will not move forward. It will not accept that answer because it's not exactly the same as what you see on Google Maps. All right, so add a question. Here's our third type of question. On this one, I'm going to ask for an intersection. So let's do find the intersection of 64 and, oh, let's do Johnston Street. Johnston Street. Again, I spelled out street. And I did not say, I could say here, find the intersection of Highway 64 and Johnston Street if I want to, or I can leave it alone. But again, in the answer, I can only say 64. Um, if I put Highway 64 in there, it won't work. 
all right? Because on the map, when it's announced, when you play the game, it is only announced to 64, and that's what I have to put in here. So I'm going to select which type pin, intersection, street, or region. This is an intersection. So it asked me for the first street name and the second street name. So the first street name is 64. And the second is Johnston ST for street. It has to be exact, remember. Okay. So that's the type of question that is an intersection question. So the fourth type of question is going to be um, a region. And let's do one of those. So what region of the map is John's house question? And I come over and I'm gonna select region. And when I hit the down arrow again, it's gonna say Northeast, Northwest, Southeast or Southwest. So when I make my map, now again, we have to remember that I'm gonna do that area. Um, and John's house is gonna be at the top right of the map. So that's gonna be the Northeast corner. North is always at the top on a Google map. So Northeast, okay. So that's the fourth kind of question. Now, the important thing about using regions, regions are a really great way, especially for a beginner to say where things are on the map. And you have four sections, Northeast, um, Southeast, Southwest, Northwest. And it kind of helps the student get an idea of how things are related to each other. So for this question, the student only has to tap anywhere in that northeast or that top right quadrant of the map. Doesn't have to tap exactly on an intersection or on a, a tag, a pin, it's anywhere in that area. So what I'm trying to develop with that is we, we want our kids to kind of have an idea. Okay, here's my map, here's my parameter of my map. You have to kind of know those boundaries and then where it is on the map, Northeast, Southwest, that kind of thing. So on this map in the Northeast is Kevin's house in the Southwest would be um, like the uh, baseball field. Um, so you wanna make sure that your area, if you use regions, that the question that you're asking is very definitely in one of those regions and not a borderline thing where it could be in two different regions where it's right on the line. Okay, so we only have four questions in here. I want to go back to my questions per round. I typically do five questions or 10 questions because it's easy to score, and, but I only have four questions in here. So I'm going to go back um, to questions per round and change that to four. When I did that, my next button is no longer dimmed. So let me take it back up to five. And the next button is dimmed, so I can't go on. So just for troubleshooting purposes, know that that's, um, you have to have at least four questions in here. I could have 25 questions in here, but I have to have at least the same, um, that amount as what I'm showing up here in questions per round. So now I'm going to hit the next button. So enter a name, description, and area for your skills. So you're gonna add the name of the map. Um, this one, I'm just going to say it's Kevin's, how, uh, let's do um, neighborhood and school. Now I'm gonna say that this is a test version because I already have the one um, completed. So I don't wanna write, uh, I don't wanna, confuse the two. So what I do is I put version one, I'll put um, Kevin's Neighborhood in School 1, Kevin's Neighborhood in School 2, because when I go try it on the iPad, I might find, oh, I can't find that one pin very easily. Or maybe I put the pin on top of the street and that's confusing. Or maybe my streets are a little bit different. Um, they're not aligned to where I want it to be. So I um, put the version number in here because when I save this, it says save as. So if I edit this map, it's going to save it as a new map. And I want to always know which version I'm working on. And I find the first couple of maps that I make, I, I will make 
um, edit it once, twice, three times before I get it just the way I want it. Um, so it is important to make sure that you have a name in here that you know which version you're working with. All right, so the description, um, maybe it is um, whatever you want to put in here. You can kind of play with the descriptions a little bit, but the description of this is the map of, usually it's whatever skill it is that you're trying to teach. Um, so the description is map of Kevin's. Um, I'm going to say basic map because this one only has a few things on here. I could add a lot more. Basic map of Kevin's neighborhood and school. Um, if I was teaching a specific skill here, you know, like block concepts or something like that, then I would go ahead and put that in an, under the description. Okay, so for me right now, the area would be mental mapping. Um, it could be more than that, but I'm just going to put in the area is mental mapping. Okay, and submit. All right, great. We added Kevin's Neighborhood School and test um, to your skills. This skill is for a specific student. I'm going to say yes. Which student? Since I asked for a specific student, I'm going to go ahead and say Diane student. And then which goal do you want to put this skill under? So I can, I'm going to say, okay, here, and it's showing me the different goals that I have here. Um, or I can put it in a, under as a new goal. So I'm going to say, okay, and now I'm going to select Kevin's mental mapping. So I have John's mental mapping. I have Kevin's. I have different ones. So I'm going to go ahead and select Kevin's. And then it comes up and said, we added the skill. Let's set a target percentage to master. So I can say, let's put it up at 100%. Five, four questions here, he should be able to nail it. Or maybe I want 50%. So I can select this as I want. Do I want to activate this skill? Um, which means I'm going to send it to the student. I'm going to confirm yes. We're all done. From this page, you can reorder, edit, or activate skills. If you like to add more skills, just click blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm gonna hit okay. And now this skill will be under Kevin's, um, skills for Kevin's mental maps. And you can see I have already created one or two maps with the same name. I have activated the maps here. So the one that we just created is Kevin's Neighborhood and Skill Test. And if I wanted to keep that active and send it to Kevin's iPad, I would um, have it activated here where it's to the right and it's red. Since this isn't a full map with a full question, I'm going to deactivate it by selecting that. You notice the last map that I sent over there is still there and it's activated. Um, and I had a couple of versions here. So I can come back here and delete the first version or two, and that would keep just the one version that is, is truly good. So if I wanted to get rid of this test map, which remember is not a full map, I would come over to the trash can and delete it here. Okay.